Greetings from the Canon Music Camp at App State University in Boone. I'm Dr. Sue Gardner, clarinet professor at our Hay School of Music here, and I'm so happy to connect with you, um, even though we're not having uh, our in-person Canon Camp uh, this summer. Here. So I want you to put a pin at the back of your mind to join us uh, next summer when we will return uh, and in full force for our three-week uh, wonderful Canon Music Camp here at the campus of Appalachian State University. So I have a quick presentation for you. Um, I'm going to provide, I'm going to give you a master class, um, work with you on our 9th um, and 10th and 11th and 12th grade uh, audition music here. So uh, give me a second here and I'll be right back with you. So here we go. So I'm doing a screen share here and I have this little thing at the bottom that I'm going to keep moving. So please bear with me. All right. So um, welcome to our summer master class series for Canon Music Ham. And as I mentioned before, our wonderful Canon Music Camp is a three-week um, three music field retreat at the Blue Ridge Mountain here in North Carolina and Boone here. And I hope you will join us uh, next summer. So for, uh, to keep up with all the latest updates, go to our website, canon.appstate.edu. Okay, so as I mentioned before, I'm Dr. Sugo, the Assistant Professor of Clarinet here uh, at App State. And I want to tell you a little bit about myself, right? Oftentimes when I meet students, they ask me questions such as how long have I been playing and how did I end up at App State? Where did I go to school and all the fun stuff. So just wanted to connect with you and give you some information about myself here. So um, like many of you, I started playing the clarinet when I was in school. And in fact, I would say that I started quite late. Um, I'm from the country of Malaysia. And when I was in school, band was not available until uh, until what we would call um, um, high school here. So for us in Malaysia in high school, uh, that's age 12. So, so I only started playing the clarinet when I was 12 years old. And I was largely self-taught and I was taught by our, by our band seniors. Uh, we had marching band and concert band and I did both. So then I started getting interested in one of the many um, camps in my state. In fact, I, I believe I joined one of the uh, early music camp uh, in my state here. Uh, of Penang in Malaysia. Um, then more opportunities became available and I started uh, to take part and eventually I decided that you know I wanted to do music for my career. So when I was finishing high school a lot of my friends were applying to the United States and the United Kingdom and Australia to go to school abroad and I said to myself you know if they could do it so could I. So I applied. Uh, I made recording cassette tapes. Back then we had cassette tapes. Uh, CD was not invented yet. Um, I recorded, I sent it in, I applied to multiple schools and I got in. And here I am in the United States years later. So I came to this, into this country, um, to the United States about uh, I think around 1990, um, 1997 I think. 1997, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, 1997. Um, and um, I did my uh, undergraduate at Luther College, and I did my master's uh, in music performance at uh, Bowling Green State University in Ohio, and then my doctorate at UNCG, and that's how I ended up in the state of North Carolina. So when I uh, finished my uh, doctorate at UNCG, um, I taught a little bit at UNC Pembroke, I taught also a little bit at Elon University, and then finally um, I got a job at a state school um, in Pennsylvania called Kutztown University of Pennsylvania and I was there for seven years. Then I saw an, app, an opening at App State and I said, you know, I always loved North Carolina and I wanted to return to North Carolina. So I applied and here I am. So um, I'm so happy to be back at the state of North Carolina and join the beautiful uh, teaching at the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains um, in, this, uh, in the town of Boone here. So some of you might be wondering, um, you are attending a master class. What is a master class? So a master class is typically a quick lesson, a short lesson if you would, with someone who is considered an expert on a subject or who, who knows a great deal about a subject. Usually I will teach a master class uh, when visiting a school. So um, a student will volunteer to play, I would have a quick uh, say 15 to 20 minute uh, lesson with them and there will be an other students watching in the audience as well. Um, I would offer tips, uh, ways to improve the students playing, um, and of course it's a two-way street. You know, I teach the students and the students in return teaches me, um, challenges me in the way I think about solving problems here. So it's really, really wonderful because it 
um, when I teach a master class, it helps me to become a better teacher as well. Now, some of you might be wondering why at why attend a master class. Well, attending a master class is a good way to learn. It's a fun way to learn. Um, you will notice as um, the teacher work with a student that is performing for uh, uh, for the teacher here. You will notice that they are struggling oftentimes. Um, with the similar issues as you are. So you're going to feel like, okay, I'm not the only one having this, this issue. So that's a wonderful thing. Um, and if, of course, if you're not playing, then it is a low stress thing, right? Um, because it's low stress, um, it doesn't mean you can tune out. If you attend a master class and you're not a performer, please bring a notebook so that you can write notes, you can jot things down. And of course, uh, think about questions because oftentimes there will be uh, time at the end of the master class to ask questions, a Q&A session if you would. Now, what if you are playing the master, at the master class? Well, of course you want to practice as best as you could. And then you want to, you want to note, make a mental note of the few trouble spots that you're having trouble, um, trouble with. That way you can ask the teacher how to solve that problem spot here. So, um, the teacher will give you a few ideas and you give them a try and sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. So it's, you know, you try your very best and you own, incorporate um, the teacher's advice and hopefully you'll get something out of the master class. There's obviously no magic answers to, um, to performance problem here. Every problem is unique. Um, every student is unique as well. So uh, the teacher oftentimes can give you um, good ways to solve or new ideas to solve tricky spots. Okay, now this is summer. Um, during the summer, it is okay and it is good to take a short summer break. So if you're taking a break, it is then the perfect time to get your instrument checked out. Send it to a repair person. Um, make sure that um, it is not leaking, right? When you bring it to a repair person, tell them that um, please check for seal, right? Oftentimes the instrument um, feels difficult to play, it feels stuffy, that's because the pads are not sealing or the pads are old, the pads are worn out. You want to have that replaced, okay? Now, instruments that are not in good maintenance, uh, it will not only make your life difficult as a performer, it will also uh, cultivate bad habits, right? So if an instrument is hard to play, it feels very stuffy, you're gonna blow harder, and when you blow harder, you're gonna get more tense, and as a result, you get used to playing with that tension. And when you have an instrument that, you know, after your instrument is repaired and you no longer have to play, you don't have no longer have to play it, uh, blow that hard, you will still continue to push that hard because your body has gotten used to it. So you will start to build bad habit if you do not um, um, have your instrument in good repair. So if you're taking a short summer break, it's a perfect time to get your instrument uh, repaired. Okay, now. During the short break that you're taking here, it is also good to listen to quality recordings um, of your favorite pieces, your favorite clarinetist, or even your audition music here. So if you know what you're going to be required to play um, ahead in advance, um, listen to a variety of performers, a variety of performances, performers and performances, and you're going to have many, many different interpretations. Now, when you listen to recording, I want you to engage with the recording. What do I mean by that? I want you to not look at your phone. I want you to not multitask. I want you to not um, do your homework. Just sit down, close your eyes, and just enjoy the music. Notice the different nuances. Notice the different instrumentation. Notice the different key, the tonality. Really engage and interact with the music. Music is so easily available these days that we take them for granted, and it just becomes like a wash of sound, and we're no longer actually listening where a music becomes a background noise, if you would. So when you're doing listening, do what we call active listening. Actively listening and noticing all the different elements um, of the piece that you're listening to. Now, part of the process of being successful as you prepare for your audition is setting up a routine, um, your daily practice. Um, get help from a teacher. It's often very, very, very handy to do so. So, Let's talk about routines here. Make sure that you set up daily uninterrupted hour, a daily hour where you're uninterrupted, where you're practicing, you're focused. Um, two hours if you would. Some students 
Some people play and focus better in short chunks. So in your case, if that's, if your, if that's your case, then practice in half an hour chunks. Half an hour chunks, take a 10 minute break, and then practice another half an hour. Make sure that it is scheduled in and it is uninterrupted. And no matter what, don't let other things take over your uh, practice hour. Okay, get a metronome and use it. Don't forget to work on tuning. Match pitch, right? If you have a tuner, oftentimes when we tune, we are staring at the tuner. We're looking at the needle in the center. That is not how it works in, in when we play music in ensembles. We need to be able to match pitch. And, and when you and your friend, for example, or your stand partner play the same note and you hear waves, you hear wah, 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 that means it's not in tune. The faster the waves, the more out of tune it is. The slower the waves, the more in tune. Ultimately, you need to be able to match pitch. So if you know if your stand partner, if the first clarinet, for example, if you're playing second clarinet, if the first if the first clarinet is playing a little bit sharp, you have to follow the first clarinet because the first clarinet is the leader. If you say no, I'm perfectly in tune. The first clarinet is sharp. Guess what? You're going to sound out of tune because you're going to sound out of tune with the leader. So practice match uh, pitch matching here very important concept so as we talk about it the faster the waves the more out of the tune the slower the waves uh, the more in tune you are so part of your practice routine should involve long tones all of you have long tones routines from your band for example when you're warming up use those or just make up some interesting long tones the goal of long tones is to uh, warm up not only your body, but also your instrument and also your embouchure to get blood flowing to your mouth, to your embouchure. So do that the very first thing. Um, it's kind of meditative um, after you establish a routine because that's it becomes who you are. It becomes the first thing that you do uh, when you warm up. Then practice your skills, your arpeggios, your chromatic skills. You know all your all district and all state have required skills, arpeggio, and chromatic skills. Practice those. And then if you're taking lessons from a teacher and you're assigned um, other techniques such as thirds, um, diminished um, scales, for example, um, practice those as well. If you don't know what those are, that's okay. But there are scales, arpeggios, and chromatic skills that you should be doing and you are already doing in school that you could be practicing on. Other items. If you have other items that needs to be practiced, for example, um, you know, new music that you just received. Practice those as well. Make practice sessions fun and rewarding for you. Okay, so don't forget to also practice sight reading. My favorite place um, to practice sight reading is on the website www.sightreadingfactory.com. Some of you might be using that feature in school, some of you might not. Um, it is a paid service, but if you go to the website, you do have uh, a uh, 15 sight readings available demo if you would check them out it is worthwhile so what it does is it generates different sight reading music pieces based on the key based on um, um, the time signature so lots of fun it will keep you engaged now if you don't um, want to go through a website uh, google imslp and then close k-l-o-s-e uh, Closé, or his name is Hyacinth Closé, Closé was a teacher at the Paris Conservatory. He was a clarinet teacher, and he wrote lots of um, challenging clarinet music. So IMSLP is basically the, web, the web's largest repository of um, public domain music. So check those out and um, pull some of the music and practice them. Um, you will notice they are difficult, um, but it will uh, definitely make you a better player. And then, of course, if you do not like either of these two options, play any music you can get your hands on. It can even be a flute music. It can even be a saxophone music, a trumpet music. The, the key here is to keep reading. That's the most important. Sight reading is one of those tools that uh, you need to practice and you need to, you need to keep working on. All right, now let's talk a little bit about care and maintenance of your instrument here. One of the most important things you could do um, as a clarinet is, is to always swap your clarinet, um, especially before putting it away. Dry the joint areas, especially the barrel areas, and especially the bell areas, the parts where they, they attach together. Make sure that you swap them. Make sure that you wipe them. Um, 
it is not only good for the instrument, it will preserve your pets and it will also prevent mold from growing, especially in the summer. So please do swap your instrument. Okay, now always protect your mouthpiece and read. I put an exclamation mark there because I've, I view those two items as very important. Your mouthpiece is extremely important because it is unique. It is unique to you. If you break a mouthpiece, well, you can't play the instrument anymore, right? Even though, yes, you can go to a store and buy another mouthpiece, you will notice that even um, mass-produced or factory-produced mouthpieces, they play a little bit differently. So what you have is unique to you. And of course, your read, you know how important it is already. Having a good read um, can make the difference between sounding great and sounding terrible. So always protect your mouthpiece and your read. Wash your mouthpiece. Use tap temperature water. Please do not use hot water because your 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 mouthpiece will be damaged if you do that. Uh, your mouthpiece will will uh, the dimension of your mouthpiece will change if you use hot water. So just use tap water. Use your thumb to just kind of scrub out all the gunky stuff that may uh, be building up here. So please do wash your mouthpiece. It is very hygienic. It's a hygienic thing to do. Um, get a clarinet stand. Um, or put away. Or put. Uh, or put your clarinet away to avoid accidents. So let me pause for a second here. Let me stop the screen sharing here. And I want to show you very quickly what a clarinet stand looks like. A clarinet stand looks like this. Mine is made by a company called k &M, And it goes in there and it screws in. And when I put my clarinet in the case, it fits neatly in the bell. See how cool it is? Right? When I take it out, I just unscrew it. Opens up in this little cool star shape. I screw it in. I have a clarinet stem. Nice and stable. Okay? Now, if you play the bass clarinet, it's important to have a bass clarinet stand too, but you might not be able to afford it, in which case you might want to ask your teacher to see if they could buy you one. Let me show you a bass clarinet stand here. This is my bass clarinet, and this is a stand. In fact, this stand is also a bassoon stand. So your teacher might be able to buy that uh, for you and also for the bassoonist to share if you want, okay? Now, you put it in, and the stand, the clarinet goes in, super stable no problem okay so stand it's very very important if you cannot afford a stand and if you have to leave for example for a long time if you have rest 10 15 minutes put your clarinet away put your bass clarinet away um, that way somebody don't accidentally walk over and knock it on the ground and causes damage and then you can't play anymore okay now if your instrument at any time doesn't feel right, for example, a note that was used to be, that used to be easy to play and suddenly becomes really difficult, um, get it checked out by a repair person. Um, it's possible that something has gone out of adjustment, uh, a spring may be broken, or go talk to your band teacher and, and show him or her that you know this used not to be a problem, but now I can't get this note to come out, or now this doesn't feel right. Um, get it checked out so that um, so that the problem doesn't get worse and so that you'll be able to continue playing and making music. Okay, let's talk about preparing for an audition. In advance, how do we prepare that in advance? Well, as we mentioned before, have a routine for daily practice. We talk about this. Set up a special time. Um, have, play your long tones. Um, practice your techniques, your skills arpeggios, your chromatic skills. Do some sight reading, okay? And of course, listen to recordings. Listen to recordings of the pieces that you're going to be required to play. Listen to different interpretations. Enjoy the music. Use your metronome. Practice with your metronome always. To me, practicing with a, with a metronome is not an option. Metronome helps keeps you honest. It stops you from rushing. It, it starts building an internal, um, an internal steady pulse that is critical to every musician. And then, of course, find a teacher if you can, if you can afford one. Find a local teacher to work with you on your instrument, to work with you on your audition music. It is very, very helpful. And then finally, use your friends and family. Well, let me rephrase that. Get help from your friends and family, right? Play for them. Get your nerves out. Um, they are all 
there to support you. Uh, play for them. They wish you well. Just keep playing for them. They will make you nervous, but it is a safe space for you to practice and for you to play for them. So let them help you. Say to your mom, um, your your grandparents, say, hey, can I play for you my audition music? Play for as many people as you possibly can. Then on the day of the audition itself, make sure you get a good night's sleep. Very important. Uh, go to bed a little bit early. Drink plenty of water and eat, eat something light. You don't want to go into the audition starving and feeling lightheaded. Conversely, you do not want to go into an audition with a full tummy. It's going to be really hard to play when you, you know, when everything feels very heavy in your tummy. So eat a little bit, drink plenty of water, uh, make sure you're well hydrated. Be organized. Have all your music together in a folder. That way you don't get in a panic when you can't find your music here. Have a good selection of performance reads. Now, I put it in quotation because, as we know, reads change from day to day. But I always have a selection of about four or five reads that I know I can rely on, no matter how badly they might change from day to day, that I know they will always be able to play, right? So um, if you don't have a read case, get a read case, number your reads, organize them. So that way you know, okay, read one through five. Those are potential or good reads that I know I can I can count on during the audition. Then after the audition, no matter what, move on. Be proud of what you did. Be proud of how you played. Be proud of how you achieved. We all know we can do better. So don't don't beat yourself up. Beat, don't beat yourself up. Just be happy that you did it. You got through it. And if you did well, congratulations. If you if you didn't play as well, guess what? Try it again. Continue to work hard. Things don't always go perfectly, and that's perfectly okay. And that's part of being a musician, being able to accept it when things don't go well. Okay, now we are getting ready to talk about our audition music here. So I want to give you a little bit um, of advice about interpretation. Know that the music notes, the, the little dots here, have limitations, meaning that they can only tell you so much information. Obviously, the little dots here tell you what notes to play, the stems tells you the note value, etc., etc., right? Now, you as the performer must look at interpretation markings such as accent, such as crescendo, decrescendo, um, such as dynamic markings through a lens of a performer, meaning you are the performer. If the composer is writing a crescendo, ask yourself, why is the composer asking me to crescendo? What does that crescendo achieve, right? If you're in a movie and you notice the music is getting louder or getting faster, right? You know deep down inside that something exciting is about to happen, right? Otherwise, the music is just getting louder. Nothing interesting about that. So as a musician, as you're playing a piece of music, know what is the emotional content. If you're getting louder, that means there's a reason. Getting louder sometimes is a way to create excitement. Or getting louder sometimes is a way, is a way to create direction to the phrase. So look at these marking through the lens of a performer. Remember, when you play music, you are the performer. So make sure you think of it that way. Don't just be a robot and play exactly what is printed, meaning that it's, if it says forte, I'm going to play loud. If it says crescendo, I'm going to play crescendo. Yes, those are correct, but there is a reason, right? So there is a reason. And it is much easier to, to play those dynamic changes if you, uh, if you know the reason, if you know exactly why you're doing that. As I mentioned before, what is the composer trying to tell you? Imagine. Many of the composers, well, not imagine, many of the composers that uh, the, the music that you're performing, well, they're no longer alive. So now you are going to have to look at their musical notation, their dynamic markings, and trying to figure out what are they trying to tell you. You're going to have to play a little bit of a mind game trying to understand and, and put yourself in the, in the composer's shoes, if you would. If, why is the composer asking you to do certain things on the music? Think of it that way and play music will instantly become more interesting. Dynamics. Dynamics is not about getting louder, getting softer, playing loud, playing soft, etc. It's a way to change color. For example, the clarinet sound, the bass clarinet sound. When you play louder, you do a crescendo, the color changes. It gets from really beautifully mellow to a little bit shrill, and that's great because those are what's called color. Um, getting louder could become um, 
um, ten could create tension. So that's what the emotional content. And as I mentioned before, getting louder is also a way to create directional phrases, right? So dynamics, many ways to use dynamics to achieve different uh, goals. Tempo changes, things such as accelerando, ritardando. The uh, accelerando is a way to create surprises, mood change. Think of what those. Um, what, what is the purpose of getting faster and getting slower? Getting slower might be relaxation. Getting faster might be creating tension, excitement, right? So again, emotional content. Modality, meaning major versus minor. When you hear a piece of music in major, you're feeling happy, you're feeling uplifted. When you hear a piece of music that is in minor, you feel a little bit sad, you feel serious, you feel mad, right? So the modality, um, actually it might more likely, the, the proper term might be tonality here. Right? Um, you can also use tonality in this context here um, to help change of mood, happy, sad, um, uplifting, serious, etc. Now, when you work on a piece of music, can you add your interpretation? If you are the performer and you're not being judged, as in you're not doing this for the all-state audition or all-district audition, absolutely, please, please put in your own interpretations. However, if you are playing this as part of a competition, as part of the adjudication, meaning all state, all district, you want to be as faithful as you can uh, to the music. And this is because the judges are evaluating you based on what is on the piece of paper. They have to be fair, they have to be objective, and therefore they have to follow, uh, they have to grade you based on what is on the piece of paper. Okay, So do keep that in mind. But if you're playing a performance with your band, for example, you can talk to your teacher, you can doc talk to the conductor and say, I would like to play this section a little bit faster. I like to crescendo here. And the conductor will be very happy um, to talk to you or discuss or say, great, this is a great idea. Right? Always a fun thing um, to put in your two cents, your own interpretation to music here. Again, before we launch into talking about the specifics of music, uh, knowing alternate fingering is super important here. Okay, why? Why is alternate fingering important? Alternate fingering important is important because it makes certain passages easier to play. It's super useful in that sense. Uh, it avoids flipping fingers. It avoids us sliding for cleanliness of passage. And of course, when we want to trail, it makes things a whole lot easier. Okay. R these are the alternate fingerings that I want to talk to you about. So the left hand, uh, sorry, the right hand E flat alternate, the left hand F sharp, the left hand B alternate, the left hand C sharp alternate, the right hand C alternate. Notice they're always opposite. The alternate is always opposite, right? Right hand goes alternate is left hand. Left hand F sharp, alternate is right hand. Left hand B, alternate right hand. You get the point here. So I want to pause this very quickly and I want to show you on my clarinet what do I mean by that. Okay, so I'm going to take my clarinet. I want to show you all those different alternate fingerings here. By the way, this applies on bass clarinet as well. Okay, so the first thing that I have on my list was the right hand E flat alternate. So the right hand E flat is the low register E flat, the psyche E flat. It sounds like this. And by the way, I'm backing up because I have a microphone here, and if I don't back off, it will sound really loud. So this E flat is the standard E flat. The alternate fingering is this little key. Often the French call it as the bis, B-I-S key, or sometimes your teacher might refer to that tiny little key as the banana key, because it looks like a little banana, I guess. So, so this fingering, this E flat, the alternate fingering is this. Okay, so. <laughs> I'm going to go back and forth. You can hear the sound about the same. Okay, now, F sharp. The second one is left hand F sharp. So left hand, F sharp, this F sharp, right? So that's an F sharp. The alternate fingering is basically a thumb F plus these two side keys, this bottom two side keys. So, like this. F, two side keys. So I'm going to go back and forth. Got it? So regular F sharp, alternate F sharp. So the right hand becomes the right hand. Okay? Now, let's talk about the left hand B. So, so we're talking about the second register B now, which is this. Right? Left hand. Right? So this. 
which is left hand, right? The alternate, if you notice, when I press this key, this key goes down. So the alternate is this. So, Okay, so now we come to the left hand C sharp, which is this, right? Left hand C sharp. Notice that when I press the C sharp key, this key goes down. So that means instead of playing a left hand C sharp, you can play it with the right hand. Okay, it's just like the low E, if you can play the low, uh, sorry, low uh, B with this, B is also here. By the way, low E, also alternate low E. So left hand C sharp, right hand C sharp. It could be left hand F sharp, right hand F sharp. Got it? So. Okay. Finally, C. Okay, this C. We know the C or low F. There's an alternate. And this one is not obvious because when you press that, no other key goes down. However, there is this. Right? So the alternate fingering is the left hand C. So by the way, the C is an F, so this could be a low F, an alternate low F here. Okay? So watch. Left hand. If you don't know those fingering, start getting used to them because they are going to be very, very handy. Um, they're going to make your learning of the piece a whole lot easier, your audition piece. Trust me on that, okay? Um, it will make your life easier uh, if you know those fingerings. So now here comes the fun part. We're actually going to talk about music, and we're actually going to um, listen to a performance and, let, and go through the music here, okay? So the piece for the 9th and 10th grade clarinet solo is what is called Solo 2B isn't particularly exciting name here, uh, but the tempo marking is Andantino con grazia. So it means moderate pace, Andantino, um, con grazia, with grace. So basically beautiful, graceful, but not too fast, okay? So I want to play for you um, a performance that I recorded, and that way you can get an idea how it sounds before uh, we talk about the music here. So here's the performance that I did, and let's take a listen. So now let's take a look at the music here. So this is in 6-8 meter, con grazia, and there's a tempo marking, quarter note equals to 60, not too fast, right? Now, 6-8, and we need to have this lilting sense. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, you notice there's a crescendo here. 
Now, the crescendo is designed so that you provide, a, you, it creates a direction to that high note. So, so it's like a, like a rise and then an, an ebb and flow, if you will. A rise and then a, a descent, if you will. So instead of thinking of playing it just louder and softer, think about aiming for that high B and then gradually relaxing. So like, you know, tension and relaxation. And then back to relaxation. Ba -da -di -da, da -da -di -da. Try not to breathe here, uh, because these two, this and this, are phrases, okay? And then, rest. -da 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 -di -ba -da -di -da. If you can get all the way here, um, and then breathe here, that will be fine, okay? So you might want to take a breath here. You might want to take a breath here. Put a little press of marks. Right? My little comma looks a little funky here. Now I'm gonna put a breath mark here and then put a little bracket. And the way I the reason I put a bracket is that it's for emergency breath, or for example, I'm gonna breathe here if I need to, but if I see it in brackets and I don't need uh, breath here, then I don't take it. So you can always mark something in like this. So notice the dynamic marking. This is a little bit louder, and in fact, you don't have to play louder because that top B is going to sound louder naturally. Okay, and then those are staccato. Make sure, NB stands for no breath. Make sure you're not breathing right here. You can go pop, 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 and then you can go da da di and take a breath here, and then keep the note going. That way it connects to this E, okay? It goes down and then you can kind of fling the G. Da da di da di da di ya da. And then no breath here again. Okay? Then there's a railroad track here. I says Jura. And take a pause here. Now, we're changing meter. We're changing um, tempo as well. Quarter note equals to 100. And then Lego Conspirator. So fast with spirit. Spiritly fast, if you would. So. 100 is not too terribly fast, okay? So same thing. The accent should not be a really hard smack, but think think of a weight. So this note, I'm going to put a line here, meaning play it longer so that it lingers to that rest. Same thing. This is not about smacking that G. This, this is about putting a little bit of weight. If you would, okay? And then, so this note pick up, picks up to that. This again picks up to that. Okay? And one, and the two, and one. Again, this note also picks up to that. Okay? Think of it that way. It's a pick up, pick up, pick up. Okay, and then a series of articulations. And again, notice that it is ascending. It is ascending. So this is actually technically, this crescendo is technically redundant because as you get higher, you're going to get louder naturally. So you don't have to work super hard. Just allow natural crescendo as you are ascending the scales here. Okay. Uh, and then this is a repeat of that, but this is a repeat of this but an octave lower. If you can not breathe here, if you choose not to, if you, if you, if you don't breathe here, it makes more sense because then these two measures becomes a phrase. And then breathe here. Let's see if I can see what I'm doing here. And then suddenly soft. And the soft actually would happen naturally too because the lower the notes are, the, the softer it is. Okay, notice you have a fortissimo. In which case, yes, the top note are going to sound louder already, but you're going to need to push a little bit more air to get that a little bit louder. Okay, now at this point, you get what is called ending A and ending B. Okay, so in my performance here, you notice I label them. So ending A. Notice there's no crescendo here. So try to keep it as even as you can. 
continue to keep the lilting sense. And then breathe right here. This is simple chromatic scales. And then put a breath mark in bracket if you need to take a breath here, if you like. Okay? So that's why we practice so many scales. You don't need to read the notes. You just need to know the starting note, the ending note, G to G. Pretty simple, isn't it? Okay? Now, ending B is a little bit more challenging as they wrote over here, more challenging. So here it'd be same thing. No crescendo. B da 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 T da 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 pre da da sorry T da 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 B da 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 pre da di da di da da. Let me do that a little bit one more time. Ba da 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 pre da di da di da da T da da di da di da di da di ba da di da di da di. Same thing. That crescendo is designed to take this note, give you a sense of direction, so that it ultimately arrives at the A. Okay, and then bounce this note. Da da di da. I put a little tenuto there. It's not in the music, by the way. So meaning meaning stress that. Bi ba da di da. Bi ba da di da. You can do the same thing here. Ba ba ba. And then stress that. Bi da da. We want to stress note that are not in the key. For example, C sharp is not in the key of G major here. E flat not in the key of G major. So we want to bring that out. Ba bi ba ba da di da 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 di. Again, lead. To the G, G to G, and I put a little uh, line here is because I want you to play that note so that it covers all the way to this rest. We don't want to go da di da di da di ba da 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 da. Right is da 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 di. Okay, so this is the solo here. So hopefully you find this useful. The next thing we're going to talk about is the uh, 11 and 12th grade solo. So I'm going to pause this recording really quickly. So we just listened to our 9 and 10th grade. We talked through the piece here, and again, I hope you find it useful. The 11th and 12th grade clarinet solo is a little bit more involved. It is actually from the Karl Maria von Weber, um, who is a very well-known uh, composer um, in the, in the um, early Romantic period here, late classical, early Romantic period here. And he was somebody who's well known for writing really amazing operas. And he also had a really great relationship with this amazing clarinet called Behrman. And he wrote um, two clarinet concertos, a clarinet quintet, and a concertino. And you may have heard of his name before. So this uh, 10, 11 and 12th grade solo came from his first concerto, the third movement um, called Rondo, and the tempo marking is Allegretto. What is a rondo? Rondo came from the French word rondu. It's a type of poetry. And it's a type of poetry that uh, certain elements keep returning. So you will see that in the music in the sense that uh, certain melody keeps coming back over and over again, and that's the aspect of the rondo. Allegretto, moderately fast, slightly slower than allegro, um, so not too terribly fast here. As I share with you the music, you will notice that there are some mistakes in my print, and hopefully by the time you see this, or by the time you watch the video, um, it will be different, okay? Uh, it should be fixed by then, okay? Now, the, the Weber clarinet, clarinet concerto here, um, was written for Behrman, as I mentioned before. And Behrman was a virtuoso clarinetist, meaning that he could he was an amazing clarinetist uh, with amazing technical ability here. Back then, he was playing on a five-key clarinet, and even then, he was already playing something so difficult as this concerto. So, why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because when Weber wrote his clarinet concerto, he left, he wrote virtually minimal articulations and dynamics market because Weber was such an amazing uh, player uh, sorry uh, Behrman was such an amazing player that Weber told Behrman basically you know have at this this is I'm giving you the notes go have fun play it the way you want to play it so as a result if you look at three or four different editions of this concerto you will notice they all look and sound slightly different the articulations are slightly different, the dynamics marking are slightly different. So when you watch your YouTube videos or listen to recordings, don't be surprised when you hear different interpretations, different articulation, different dynamic markings. Here. So um, in many sense, it is problematic um, that this solo is chosen, but in many sense, as a performer, you have many, many, you have so much freedom, okay? Your job as you're learning this is to be 
as faithful as you see in the music. Play what you see in the music. Play and articulate, articulate, play the articulations on the music. That is the key here. So let's take a listen. And here's the performance of the vapor. Before we talk about the music, I just realized that in my PowerPoint slides, I forgot to share with you another alternate fingering that we'll, you're going to need to know um, as part of learning this piece. Okay. So earlier, we talked about the, the alternate low F sharp, the side key F sharp here. So instead of playing this F sharp, we play the thumb F with the two side keys here. There's of course uh, the F or the low B. Let's use F. Okay. The alternate fingering is this again another banana key another bis key if you would right bis or banana key so this is f sharp now i'm going to alternate back and forth this fingering is super critical in the vapor so make sure that you learn that if you don't know this finger right already get used to that when you're playing chromatic scales you can go d d sharp e f f sharp and still going e f uh, flipping f sharp you go e f f sharp okay super important here that way you don't have you, you it was it's cleaner than flipping swapping fingers here okay so i'm going to take a pause and we're going to take a look at the music so here we are 
This is the Weber Concerto here. Let me see if I can turn on the light. Don't know if it makes a difference here, but all, anything that's brighter is always helpful. So uh, first of all, it's missing the Rondo here, which should be fixed by then. Um, and of course, this is the third movement here. And the piece is much longer than you will see here. There are three pages. Okay, the actual piece is much longer because you have the orchestra actually playing as well. So you will see spots that I have fermata here, for example, and then the fermata over here. That's because we're cutting out all the orchestra part. Okay, so let's talk through this. A lot of different things here and there, right? Again, these are not really designed for you to go da 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 ba da 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 da, right? It's, that's not the goal. The goal here is to give this, this figure da 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 di a direction. So the idea here is to start from C sharp and to sort of like smack the B. Ba da da di da da, ba da da di da da. And this accent would naturally happen. Um, it, it will be really hard done not to accent that. So let it naturally accented here. So this is, again, an example of a directional marking. The dynamics is used to create direction. So lots of pickup. Ba -da -da -di. Ba -ba. Again, another pickup. So this is a pickup to this B. This is a pickup to D. Same thing. Repeat, repeat, repeat. And then di -da 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 -di -da. And this should be a G sharp. And this should be fixed by then when you have the music. So di -da 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 -di -da 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 -di -da 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 di And then again, another pickup. I use this little bracket here. My teacher used to do that, and I'm following, um, I'm adopting his technique here. Little bracket telling us that this three notes, um, this, it's a pickup to here, no, to this. Ba -da -da -di -da -da. Again, this is a pickup to here. Same thing, this figure repeats. Ba -da -da -di -da 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 -di -da -da. So, all these dynamics, think gentle rather than dynamic, right? Think gentle. When you want to speak gently, oftentimes we speak softly, right? So think of it in this way, an emotional content. Then you have Now, notice I put brackets here. Brackets here, okay? I was thinking of this in such a way as in Arrival here, and then I pick up This becomes a pickup to here. And then this arrives here. So di da 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 da, right? So di da 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 da, and then da da da, and this becomes a pickup to here. Lots of pickup, right? If this is too confusing, don't worry about it. But it makes it makes musical sense because then this leads to here, this pickups to here, which leads to here, and then this pickups to here, and so on and so on. Okay? This I put an R because this F sharp should be played with a right hand. It's much easier rather than using a left hand F sharp. Trust me on that. But you're welcome to experiment to see if it's easier to play it um, left and right hand. Okay. At the faster tempo, at 116 that is being asked for, um, I can guarantee you the right hand is much easier. Speaking of tempo, okay, 116 is pretty fast, right? If I am judging, if I'm listening to students play this piece, I would much prefer the student play it slower but cleaner. Right, maybe about you know, hundred between a hundred and hundred sixteen, if that means it, if that if that means you can play it cleanly, I rather hear you play it slowly, cleanly, musically, rather than uh, a student playing it super fast and butchering everything. Okay, so you got to pick your poison here, make a decision. If you decided that, of you practice and you and you say to yourself, I can only hit 100 cleanly and, and nicely, then play at 100. And your goal is to always work up the tempo to get it faster and faster and faster. Okay? Keep going. This is not a repeat of the figure from here. So this is, this is a repeat of here. And then this is just a simple scale. And again, these crescendos are redundant because as you're going up the scale, you're going to get louder. So just let it naturally get louder. So right. So grace note. So the tenuto mark here is to think of putting an emphasis. So think of leaning on this note. Okay. Then that's a little formato here. And then here, skirt skirt zando means a very fast and light. Um, um, Marking here, scherzo, um, it 
it's a it's a marking that's popularized by Beethoven and typically shows up in the third movement. But so so in this context, scherzando is a mini scherzo here. Um, let me take a quick uh, pause here for a second, and I'm back. Um, scher scherzando, as I mentioned before, um, it is usually fun. It is jokingly. So think of this, you know, something this fast could be fun and jokingly and light. So play this lightly. Da 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 da. Here in this instance, I put an F. F stands for that fork fingering here. Let me switch back the camera here so you can see what I'm doing. So the, the F is my own way of writing this fingering, fork. So this looks like a fork to me, right? So that's what I mean by F. You can choose your own system. You can write it whatever you want, and that's perfectly fine, okay? So that's what, that's what we're talking about here, okay? Back to the music. So that's what the fork is. That way you don't have to flip between the F sharp and F natural. Okay, and then same thing here. I naturally go to the right hand. You're welcome to use the left, but then it becomes a little bit harder to go from left hand C sharp to, to E here. So use right hand and then dee da 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 dee da 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 dee da da da. And same thing, fork here. Dee da da. Okay, and then light. Da da dee da 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 dee da da da. And then here, I choose to use right and left hand. You can choose to go left hand and right, right hand, regular fingering, up to you, you have a choice, okay? These are all my fingerings. As you will learn, fingerings, once you familiarize yourself with, with the different alternate fingerings, it becomes a, a matter of personal choice, okay? So, okay, all these marks are, tenuto marks are all, think, are all um, the purpose is stress. Okay, that's the whole point. And then, and then this little swell is to lead, so that this passage go to the G, to the F. So and then and then soft. So it's like a little burst, and then after after your little mini explosion here, you relax. And then same thing. And then I'm gonna take a breath here. Another two neuro here. Okay? Another pause. The pause are usually the orchestra playing. Okay? And then when we get to this section. Don't forget that's an F sharp, yeah? Again, all this will happen naturally because you're jumping here. Same idea as this opening, but now different pitches. And here, this is where you got to use the middle finger. So middle, that's what, what the M stands for. And middle, what I mean by that is middle F sharp, okay, versus fork, middle F sharp. So a regular if you would. Some students put R for regular or R-E-G, up to you. You decide what you want to put on. Back to the music. So this is the tricky one. Use middle and you gotta you gotta flip to the F natural. And then this is let's see. Da 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 That's an F natural. So that's a mistake here that will get fixed. Let me check this really quickly here. I played it so many times I didn't even think about it. Yep, that E natural is supposed to be an F natural. So that will be fixed. So this is when you use fork. Fork here, fork all the way. And then the last one you got to use middle. If that makes any sense. So the first one, you use middle and then everything else, everything, all the F sharp, sorry. There's only two forks here, which is here, the F sharp and the F sharp here. Okay, so as you play this, you will notice, right? So the first one and the last one is the middle, uh, is is the middle finger, in the middle section F sharp use fork. Okay, you can try flipping them an entire way through and see what happens. You're welcome to do that, but it's much much easier when we use this finger. Same idea, and then I take a breath here, or you can 
put it in a bracket for a, for an emergency only. I tend to put a little tenuto here. A mini, this is the word, is mini. A mini rollantando. Uh, let's write that a little bit better. Mini, mini rollantando, so slow down just a little bit. And then take a breath right here before the melodies. The same idea, return, return, returns, keep going. Same as beginning, same as beginning. And make sure that last note is long, okay? Hold it all the way to the next beat if you want. And then this is a change of mood. The formata is there because the orchestra is playing a little transitional section here. And then here, di da da di, dolce means sweetly, right? Piano, bi da da di da. Here, the crescendo is designed to uh, give a direction from the G to the B. Okay, instead of playing louder, think of going towards the G. Okay, going towards the G. And then, same thing that the crescendo is going to happen naturally over here as you're descending. Di da da di da. Again, direction to the G. Same thing. All of this swelling, if you would, the hairpins, right, the swelling, are designed to give a sense of direction, the ebb and flow of the music. Okay? So here, your ultimate destination here is the direction from this B is to go to the G. Okay? This is sort of a passing note, passing tone, if you would. This needs to go to here, and that's why you're crescendoing through until you get to this note, okay? Then there's a little turn here, and that turn needs to have a little sharp at the bottom. It's missing that, and again, that will be fixed, okay? A turn with a sharp at the bottom means that the bottom note needs to be raised, okay? Uh, the pitches are E, F, E, D sharp, E, and then the G, okay? Let me play that for you very quickly here. So, E, F, E, D sharp, E, and then G. So. That's what it is. Back to the music. So the bottom note is raised, so that's the D sharp. Let me write this note out. So E, F sharp. E, D sharp, E, F, da, di, sorry, E, F sharp, E, D sharp, da, di, da, 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 and then back to the E, and then before you go to this G, okay? Ba, di, da, 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 di. And then same thing, crescendo to the A, a sense of direction. That should be an F natural here. It should be corrected by the time you get there. Be da da di and breathe. Da 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 di da di da di ba di da di. And here, think of this as a big relaxation. Really hard to write when I'm sitting sideways here. Make sure you count carefully these two measures. Okay, super important. Count it because the um, the judges will be counting because it's such a short measure. It's only four beats because we're in two four. Loud, loud, and then suddenly soft. Contrast. Here, make sure you use right hand. B, left hand C sharp. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to play that D sharp. Okay? That's why the alternate fingering is super important. Don't need to smack that high E, right? Because it's going to happen, it's going to pop out naturally because it's such a high note. Okay? Da di da di da di. And then another formata. And then same, and a new idea. Ba di da 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 ba da di da da di. So left hand C here, that's why the L is there. That way you can get to the D sharp. Okay? Ba di bi ba da 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 di da da di. Here you can use right hand on the B and then left hand C sharp. Or you can use uh, right hand B and left hand, uh, sorry, you can use left hand B and right hand C sharp. Up to you. You have a choice here. Uh, there is a smaller articulation uh, mistake here. Notice in this passage is ba-da-di-da-da. This one is da 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 It will be fixed to the da-da-di-da-da. -da -da. Okay? 
so smaller articulation problem here. Ba da di da 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 di da. Okay. Now I choose to use left hand um, C and right hand B. You can decide what you want to do. For me, it's a whole lot easier to go from right hand to the D. Okay, right hand B to the D. Again, you have a choice. And then right hand. Much easier. Put a little noodle. Again, a small redundant. You don't want to do something big here because the music is continuing on very quickly here. Okay? So, very, very tiny, very, very subtle redundant here. Okay? B. And, I, and I, for me, I take a breath. Some people don't like that, but that's my choice. I decided that that's where I need a breath. Ba da 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 ba da 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 da. Again, left hand. Da da di da da di. Ba di da da di da 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 ba da di da da di. Again, right hand is easier. Da da di da da di. And then I put two Bs. You might see that two B stands for big breath. Big breath. Because a long passage is coming up. Big breath. Ba da di da 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 di da. This will be fixed, by the way. There's a mistake there. It should go all the way here. Right over here, as you see, I will fix that, get that fixed. Again, I use left hand B, uh, left hand C, right hand B. So, again, lead to the A. The crescendo will happen naturally if you think of leading to the A. And then, Da, da, di, da, 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 di, da, da. This one is a little bit tricky. Think of this first F as belonging to this. So, di, da, 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 di, da, 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 da. and then this is a start. Da, di, da, 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 di, da, 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 di, da, da. So again, di, da, 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 da. the F is the arrival point for, from the previous measure. And then the A is the start of the new funky uh, articulation. Da -di -da -da, da -di -da -da. Again, notice the three notes of the downbeat, just like the opening. Ba -da -da -di, except it's backwards now. Da -di -da -da. Uh, sorry, da -da -da. Da -di -da -da. Da -di -da -da. three notes to the downbeat. Okay. And then this needs to go all the way here. Again, a mistake. I will have that fixed also. And then da -di -da. There's a swell on the A flat. So, if you can get soft here on the low F sharp, that would be helpful. So, swell to the A flat. Okay? And then a simple um, scale here. Take a breath. And play all the way. Hold that note over longer than the coordinate. Okay? It seems a little bit tricky here. There's a lot of information. Feel free to play back this recording again. And if anything is not clear, reach out to me. I'll be happy to walk you through or give you a little lesson here. Okay? All right, I'm going to take a quick pause here and I'll return back with the bass clarinet. Um, uh, portion of this uh, presentation. So we just talked through the Weber here and as, as I mentioned before um, there are some mistakes that should be fixed by the time you get the music and um, if anything is not clear I went through the tutorial pretty fast here um, let me know reach out to me and I'll be happy to work with you on that. Okay, so we talked through the, the piece of music, the vapor here. Okay, now let's take a look at the bass clarinet, the 9 and 10 grade bass clarinet solo here. So if you're on the bass clarinet, um, if you're working on bass clarinet solo, this is um, of interest to you. Okay, so here we go. So in your case, your solo is what is called solo 2B. Again, very, very um, exciting title here, solo 2B. Um, the tempo marking here is Allegretto Grazioso. So moderately fast, that's the allegretto, and graceful, grazioso, graceful in a flowing manner, okay? Let's take a listen here. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
here we are in the music that you just heard me perform here. So this is the um, the Allegretto Grazioso solo 2B here, so on the bass clarinet. So 3-4 meter, the key of B flat major, bum, ba, da, 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 di, da, di, da, di. notice I didn't take a breath here because the, the, the phrasing of this piece is a little bit funky here. Bum, ba, da, 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 di, da, di, da, di, da, di, da, di. Da, bum. Now, notice I put this question mark and in the parenthesis, if you would, in the bracket here. You can take a breath here or you can take a breath here. In my performance, I took a breath here. So I do this. Bum, ba, da, di, da, 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 di, da, di, da, di, da, 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 bum, da, di, da. So I go, bum, da, di, da. You could go, di, da, di, da, di, da, di, da, bum, ba, da, da. One can argue whichever direction that. Um, you would like to take this, meaning that you can take a breath here and it'll be fine. You can take a breath here and it can be fine. It's a matter of personal personal choice and interpretation. If you if I take when I take a breath here, this becomes part of this passage. If you take a breath here, then the passage ends right here. The new phrase starts on this note. For me, the for me, I hear it as the new phrase starting it here. You can hear it differently, and that's perfectly fine. Again. Your breath point determines the phrasing. You have a choice in this instance, okay? I just happens to choose to take it here. And then in this instance, I also took a breath after just sort of the same spot here. So, bum, da di da da di da 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 di da ba bi. And then if you choose to take a breath here, then you might want to take a breath here because you notice it's the same half note, different pitch, okay? And then. Da di da da di da da di da. So swell all the way up to the F, meaning give it a direction so that it leans to the F, and then same thing leans to the E. Okay, all of these accents are going to happen naturally, for, especially for the B flat, and then for the F. But because bass clarinet is so low, you might need to give it an extra notch of air so that they they sound a little bit more obvious. On the B flat clarinet, this would be pretty obvious. On the bass clarinet, you might need to work a little bit harder so that this accent note comes a little bit, comes out a little bit more. Okay, bum ba, like sit on that note, bum, meaning that stress, bum ba da di da da ba di da di da di da da ba. Notice I didn't go bum pa da di da di pa. We're not doing that. We're stressing. We're not beating those notes. Okay, where were we? Right here. So. Uh, so uh, for me, I take a breath here, and then take a breath here, okay? And then, forte. Notice this bracket. What that is, What? why did I write that? I wrote that because I want you to make sure that you play those triplet accurately. Stretch them out. Try not to make the mistake of going... Da 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 or da 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 so da 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 triplet two three triplet two three the contrast of the triplet against the duple here very important da 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 di da 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 di ba di da 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 and of course take a breath and then chromatic scales graciously da da di da 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 di da da di da bi ba da da di da da di da 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 and then Loud, ba di da da da, ba di da da da. Make sure you maintain loud, and then take a breath if you need to. Di da di da di da da, ba da 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 di, ba da da di, ba ba, and then the original melody returns. Ba ba da 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 di da. Same idea, you get it, okay? This crescendo again to give you a sense of direction going to the B flat, okay? And then don't forget the forte here. Okay, now when we get to here, we get to the solution A and B or the ending A and B. Again, ending B is more challenging. Okay, so let's get to here. Bum, ba, da, di, ba, bim, ba, da, di. Make sure those accent comes out. Again, stress. Don't don't bang on it, but think stress. Bim, ba, da, di, ba, din, da, da, di, da. Breathe. Da, da, di, da, 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 di. Make sure you don't breathe right here. Da da di da 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 bi da da di da di da da. Again here tells you to hold the note all the way to beat two, okay? And don't forget the forte. All right. Now solution two or not solution two? I keep saying solution two, but um, ending B if you would. Um, notice the 
two needle and the dot. It should sound like this. Da 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 da. So di da. So ba da ba ba ba. So longer short. Da da di da 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 di. Da da di da 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 di. Breathe. Da 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 di da da. Make sure this triplet is also beautifully stretched out. Da 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 di da da. Da 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 di da da. Notice this crescendo. Every time this passage comes back, da 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 di da da, this gets louder. Ba da da di da da, da 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 di da da, and finally forte. Here, optional breath. Again, that's why they're in brackets. Da di da di da di da di da da. So triple, 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 one, boom. Make sure you don't breathe right here. Don't breathe right there. Okay. Right. Hopefully, this is helpful. This is the ninth and tenth um, grade um, solo here. We'll take a pause and we'll come back to um, the 11th and 12th grade um, solo. So we just talked through the piece for 9th and 10th grade bass clarinet. And we also listened to it. So now let's get to the 11th and 12th grade bass clarinet solo here. Now, the 11th and 12th grade bass clarinet solo um, is transcribed, or it came from uh, Mozart's Bassoon Concerto K191. K stands for Kushel. K-O-E-C-H-E-L, and Koshel was somebody who was cataloging Mozart's pieces. So this is catalog number 191, and it's the third movement, also rondo, okay? So this is a transcription. Transcription meaning, uh, transcription means, um, the meaning of transcription is rewriting a piece of music originally for one instrument to another, or for another instrument, okay? So again, rondo came from the French poetry rondeau, where certain elements of, of the poetry, or in this case, music comes back over and over again. The tempo is not marked in the music, um, but I like to take it between 115 and 120. When you, if you go on YouTube and listen to a, a series of uh, performances, the bassoon version, if you would, you will notice a wide variety of tempo. 120 for me is the ideal tempo, but 115 is also acceptable. Again, playing it s slower but cleanly is always preferable than trying to play super fast or play it fast but butchering uh, most parts of it, okay? There again are some mistakes in the print and it should be fixed soon by, and by the time you get the music, okay? Let's take a listen. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, let's talk about the music here. So again, this is the Mozart bassoon concerto here. Um, and the word rondo is missing. It is the third movement, it's called rondo. And there's no tempo marking. So I put down in our presentation, my presentation, uh, between 115 to 120 here. Again, I prefer 120, but if you want to take a little bit slower, that's perfectly fine. Um, there's a fine line between too fast and difficult to play, and there's a fine line between a little bit slower than 120. Uh, it feels a little sluggish, so you might have to find a sweet spot. So the first, notice there are a bunch of tenuto marks here. Again, those are those are just um, an emphasis if you if you would. Ba da da di da 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 di da di da da. So um, it's very nuanced. If you can't do those, just play them straight. Take a breath there. Same thing, repeat. Trail, start the trail from the top. Okay, now, during Moxus's time, um, there is something called performance practice, uh, meaning that ornamentation, things such as grace note or trails, there's a certain way they do things. And during Moxas' time, um, especially in the classical period, oftentimes in concertos, the trail starts on top. Of course, uh, different composers uh, prefer their ornaments play differently, and there's a whole world of ornamentation, or th um, in the, more exactly, it's called performance practice um, uh, discussion out there. So. For our purposes, we want to keep things cons consistent. We're going to trail from the top, okay? Meaning that instead of starting the trail on the D, you start the trail on the E, okay? So let me take my bass clarinet so you can hear. Uh, actually, my bass clarinet doesn't have a read, but my clarinet will do. Instead of going, we're gonna go, we're gonna start from the top E here, okay? All right, so, this is a stress. And then again, if you take a look at the original bassoon score, this is actually a grace note leading to the B trail, quarter note B trail. But in this in this version, it has been written out nicely for you so that you don't have to um, um, wonder about how to play that. So so just trail regularly on the B. Don't worry about starting on the top note because if you look at this carefully, you are trailing from the top note, which is C. Right. If you look, if you imagine this is a quarter note B trail, and we start from the top, there's that C. Okay, and then here, swell all the way into this measure. Okay, now instead of thinking of purely playing it louder and getting softer, think of how your tone color, how your bass clarinet tone changes when you get louder. It sounds really beautiful and mellow, and as you get louder, it sounds a little bit more strident, a little bit clearer, right? That's what we mean by color. So instead of just playing louder and softer, think about changing of color here. So changing of color to a little bit brighter here, and then back to the mellow here. And then take a breath here. And then breathe. And then this piano is an echo. It's an echo of this passage. So remember, we're 40, 40, 40, 40, 40 here, right? 40. And then an echo. And then again, this crescendo leads us to that D. Okay, make sure you hold that. And then, forte. Big jump. Well, it's just an octave. If you want to linger on that bottom note before you leap up to the top notes, perfectly good. Right? And then ti da 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 ti da ti da da ba da 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 ti da da ti da da. Okay, if you want to linger on that note, you can do that too. You can linger on that note too. Ba da 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 ti da da ti da da. It's not in there. This is an example where you can put in your own interpretation here. Okay, let me move the music up. These two measures have note mistakes. Again, by the time you see this. It should be fixed. So it should be D, uh, E, D, uh, D, da, da, E, D, C. Let me rephrase that. Let me fix that. E, D, C, B, A, D, da, da, D, da. Yeah. So it should be E, D, C, B, A. Again, I 
if, if you're curious to see what this measure looks like, uh, pull out this score in MSLP or the original bassoon score and take a look at this. This is again an ornamentation. These, these the top note of the 16 notes, if you would, are grace notes. But in this edition, it has been written out for you for clarity, but unfortunately, there's a note mistake. So, E, D, C, B, A, da, 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 da. Okay. So, um, again, by the time you see this, it should be fixed. Same thing, E, D, C, B, A, da 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 and then breath, da 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 don't, don't take a breath here because you'll break the phrase. If you want to take a breath here, you can. Put it as an emergency breath if you would. And then again, here, think of this swell as a change of color. And here is a direction leading to this D, if you would, to this D. So this is a little bit of a shine. So tension, relaxation, tension, relaxation. Again, leading to the E, create tension. And then relax, that's why the decrescendo. Again, shine, the F, natural. If you want to do this here, perfectly okay. Again, if you want to take a breath here, put this emergency breath. Perfectly fine. Okay, and I put this little thing here because I want you to tell you, uh, I want you to remind you to hold this note all the way to the rest. So, so one, two, three, rest. Not not one, two, three, right? Not ba da. It should be ba da da da. Okay. Now, these two measures of rest. Notice that I counted them very carefully. Okay, unless the judges tell you to move forward. I suggest that you count them carefully because sometimes judges use the rest to figure out if you can keep a steady beat. So as you're practicing these, count that carefully, count it accurately. And one way to make this um, easier to count is to listen to the uh, orchestra recording, listen to the bassoon version, and familiarize yourself, yourself with what the orchestra is playing. And instead of just counting out um, blank measures, you are hearing or you are, you are playing back the music for that seven measures and that make life a whole lot easier to count, okay? Well, it makes it this, this two measures a lot easier to count if you can hear what is happening here. But regardless, count it carefully unless the judges say, please skip the rest. Then in which case you have the permission to skip the rest, okay? Now, keep going. Make sure you hold that note long, yeah? Low breath here. Notice I put a bracket like what my teacher taught me. <coughs> Excuse me. Meaning this note belongs to this passage. Okay. Let me clean this up a little bit. So So this is a pickup to the F. This G is an arrival from this passage. This arrival from this passage. And then this again is a pickup, this B. And then start from trail from the top also. And then loud. Pump those notes out. Again, pump out the F. And then, and then suddenly you can get a little bit softer. Again, these hairpins, think of leading to the E flat. So it's a changing of color. And that E flat does not belong to the key, right? So that's an interesting note, meaning that we want to bring it out. And therefore, these hairpins are designed to do. And then, and then, from the top, start from the A. Make sure you count that carefully. It's one, two, and a three. One, two, and a three. Count that accurately, okay? Tiny little retardo ret note here. And then back to our tempo. By the way, this is the original melody that the orchestra starts with. So if you listen to the to the orchestra recording of this, you will hear that this is what the orchestra starts the whole piece with. 
In fact, the piece doesn't start with you or the bassoon playing. In fact, the orchestra plays before this actually comes in. Okay, and what they play at the very beginning of the piece is this melody. And then I choose to take a breath here. Okay, you have a choice. You can go and then breathe. And then you can take a breath here. So you can take a breath here and here. But in my case, I choose to play all the way through and then take a breath here. It's a choice, personal choice. You can you get to decide here. And then two question mark here means double breath like that. Or you can put big breath. That way we can play long passages. Ba -dee -da -dee -da -da, lead to the E. That's why the swelling. Da. So ba -dee -da -dee -da -da, da -dee -da -dee -da -da. and then Poppy, poppy, poppy. Okay, I'm gonna erase this to let you see what's going on here. See all those tonio marks? It's here, not here, not here, 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 here. Let's get rid of all that. Play every single one of this full. Poppy, 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 pa. Not staccato. Not that tick, that tick. It's poppy, 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 pa. Da da di da di da. Poppy, 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 pa. Pa da da. Again, there's a tonio which I take out. Papi da da di da di. Papi, 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 pa. Pa da di da di da. Pa da da di da. Ta, right? So that's why I took a double breath here um, so that I can um, play that long passage. Take a breath here. Subito means suddenly, suddenly soft. Again, crescendo, lead to the fourth measure. Ta, change of color. Ta. And then, let me erase this. There is no way on the planet a bass clarinet is going to be able to play all this all the way through. They could if you play it super fast. Um, in various different editions also, the slur is not there. So we're going to take this out. We're going to slur all the way to G. And then we're going to take a breath here. Meaning, da, one, two, three, one. Da, 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 di, da, da, da. So, da. So take a quick breath here, meaning cut off this line, meaning cut off on a downbeat. Take a quick breath and then think of this note as a pickup. So one, two, three, off. So again, breath. Again, throw from the top. And then here is an echo here. Slow down just a little bit. Rantando means slow. Slow means slowing down. And then forte. Back to original tempo. And then trill from the top. And play that long. Okay? Lots of information again. Um, I'm attempting to teach you all this material within a short amount of time again if anything is not clear please reach out to me and be happy to work with you have a lesson with you on that um, so again lots of information hopefully you'll find this helpful here let me take a pause on this picture here on this video so we just went through the 11 and 12th grade bass clarinet solo here we listened and then we talked through it and as I mentioned before lots of information uh, there are indeed some mistakes that should be fixed soon okay um, if anything is not clear, as, as uh, you saw, we went through it very quickly, feel free to reach out to me here. Um, I'm Dr. Sugo again, Professor Clarinet here, and this is my email, gohsk at appstate.edu. I hope that you have found this masterclass um, helpful. Again, please join me uh, for Nexus's Canon Camp, summer 2022, June 25th to July 6th at the, campus, at the beautiful campus of App State University in Boone here. Uh, three week of wonderful music making opportunities here. And check out our website for more information, um, the Canon Music website at canon.epsi.edu. All right, thank you for joining me, and I hope you benefit from this masterclass. Again, reach out to me, and I hope you have a wonderful summer. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.